Hello Canadian gardeners, cold climate gardeners, and gardeners of the extremes. How are you guys doing today? If you're new around here, my name is Ashley and I make videos geared towards the science of gardening and plant care. So if you like the sounds up, be sure to give this video a thumbs up. Today's video is actually sponsored by PV Mart. PV Mart has an awesome program right now where they are teaching and giving free information out to anyone willing to listen. And they are going through all the different aspects of homesteading and just outdoor gardening, animal care, all the way to canning and preservation. So if that's something that you guys are interested in looking at or trying out or learning more about, I'll leave some links in the resource section below that you can check out and uh, maybe you guys will learn something new on there yourselves. PV Mart is an awesome company for doing this, for providing Canadians with this sort of information, but they also carry some really good products that I personally use in my own garden and even in some of my house plant care. So check out their stores, make sure you support them. They are supporting such a tiny YouTuber such as myself, along with bloggers and people from all different walks of life. In today's video, PV Mart has asked me to go through with you guys the different things that you can harvest in August, but also how to keep your crops going all year long till the first frost. So in today's video, that is exactly what we are going to go over. We are going to be talking about leafy greens all the way to the harvesting of tomatoes, potatoes, and everything else in between. So if you guys like the sounds of that, be sure to stay tuned. At the end of the video, I am saving the most juicy morsels which include the tips to keep your garden going on strong till the end of the season are you starting to notice that things are getting overgrown maybe a little bit scraggly not doing as well well i'm going to give you some hints on what you can do in your garden to ensure that you continue to produce fruit but also that those plants stay healthy all the way to the end so today's video we are actually in my grandparents garden and they make their garden really productive given the limited space that they do have they organize it pretty much similarly every single year. It provides them with year-long vegetables that they use to can and they eat throughout the winter. I actually just had a pickle sandwich from my grandma's garden from last year. So just to put that in perspective, for two people, this garden not only feeds them, but it feeds any large festive activities that are held here at this house. So while my grandma and grandpa are a little bit camera shy and not too keen on being on the video, they were loving enough to volunteer their garden for me, partially because I am picking their string beans for them today in the heat of the summer. So. This is a little bit of payoff. So let's start off with leafy greens. This would apply to things like lettuce or spinach, arugula, anything in and around that wheelhouse, such as herbs too. This can be harvested whenever you deem it ready to be edible. And generally right around now, you should have gotten around one to two harvests already off of this crop. But if you haven't, then maybe check out your garden and see if it's time. When you t decide to harvest these leafy greens, you're gonna wanna make sure you take no more than a third of, of the leafy green away from the plant that is planted in the ground. And the reason for that is because as long as you're only taking a third of the plant every two weeks or so, you are going to allow that plant to continue to grow. Now, the shots I'm showing you right now are actually of the lettuce that is in my grandparents garden and as you can see it has not been fully harvested there is still some leafy greens there and it was actually just harvested about a week ago now the remaining part that is left behind is going to ensure that you're going to have salad a few more times this year so leafy greens number one rule is do not take more than one third of the plant away so while my grandparents don't have onions in their garden they run into an issue where they end up with a lot of pests and the way to prevent this is actually in the beginning of the season by planting them very early in cold ground but when it comes to harvesting them, a really good sign that it's time to take your onions out of the ground is when the leafy stalks begin to tip over. This means it is time to harvest. One thing you should watch out for when you're watching your onions is anything that has bolted. So something that has a flower on the top or is starting to form that flower capsule, that is something that you're going to want to harvest sooner rather than later. And you're also going to want to use it sooner rather than later. Plants that have decided to bolt because of the heat, that is no fault of yours, that is completely mother nature's choice, are not great for storage. So make sure if it has that flower or that flower cap, 
on it that you harvest it and use it right away but anything else leave it in till the stalks begin to fall over and then you can dig it up out of the ground and put it in storage for future use what my grandparents do have though is leeks and i will show you some footage of what these leeks look like these are kind of unique in both flavor and appearance but they're also a really great crop to grow and they are ready a little bit earlier than onion bulbs generally are. And the reason for that is they just simply do not get as large. So the goal with leeks is to ensure that a bulb does not form and it's just a cylindrical stalk essentially. And it's going to depend on the variety of leek you have, but the cylindrical stalk can get anywhere from three quarters of an inch to one inch in diameter. And generally the best way to know when it's time to harvest that leek is when about three inches of the white stem is showing outside of the ground so I'll show you some shots of exactly what it looks like when it is ready and that is when it is time to pull your leeks out and all you do is simply just pull upwards but another thing you can do is dig them out just make sure you dig down far enough so that you clear kind of the stock portion and you get a full bulb to taste in your leek soup so really fun fact about the carrots and beets turnips of the world is that they're actually ready when you deem them to be ready. And I know that sounds a little bit odd, but technically you can leave them in the ground or you can harvest them early. And in the case of carrots and beets, the earlier you harvest them, when you get the baby beets or the baby carrots, those are usually the sweeter, more flavorful type root vegetables but if you're looking for something that is more of substance a little bit more hearty and maybe more of an intense woody texture then you can actually leave them in the ground and they are a cold crop they're very popular for being able to withstand some frost so there's no rush when it comes to carrots and beets but i encourage you just to try them out a little bit early Fun fact about the foliage on both carrots, beets, turnips, is that you can actually eat the leafy green foliage. Now, it's going to depend on your desire for texture and exactly what you're going to enjoy and like, but there's lots of really neat recipes for both carrot greens and beet greens. I encourage you to look up. One of my favorites is actually introduced to me by the Ukrainians of the world, and it is beet leaves um, rolled in rice. It's very delicious stuff. So again, those are options that you can use for the whole plant. And I wouldn't shy away from harvesting these early because they, they're pretty flavorful. They're pretty tasty when they're, they're newly grown. Another thing to keep in mind, whether it's radishes or any root veg um, that has a shorter growing season, is when you do pull them out, say here at the beginning of August or middle of August, if you have an extended growing season or you think that the summer might be lasting a little bit longer than it normally does, do not hesitate to replant that area, maybe with lettuce or with more root vegetables. Generally, these take around 30 days um, to 60 days, and uh, that would be called a double crop cropping, which is really interesting and a really cool method that will give you more vegetables in the future. Beans, peas, and legumes. Now, this is the reason why I'm actually here is to pick the beans that are in my grandparents' garden. And the best way to know when your beans, peas, and legumes are ready is when they start to look swollen. And I know that sounds a little bit odd, but that's exactly the view it gives you or the the look it has it looks as though it's swollen with water and that means that it is time to harvest generally snap peas will kind of look limp or squished until they are ready um, and once they fill out then it is time to start plucking when they do start to bloom and the beans begin to start growing it is very important to note that you want to be in there every two days checking your legumes to ensure that you are harvesting any new pods that are forming or beginning to ripen and the reason for that is if you are plucking and harvesting you are essentially doing what you would do with a normal flower which is called deadheading and therefore the plant will continue to bloom and provide you with even more pods for the rest of the summer. So it's labor intensive, but it's definitely worth it because you can get a lot of beans off of a very small area of land. So be out there every two days, ensuring that you're picking so that you, that flower cycle continues forward. Tomatoes and peppers. Now, you guys probably don't have any tomatoes or peppers that are ripened yet. If you do have anything that's ripe, it may have been seeded early and it's just a larger plant at this point, but I encourage you to wait if you're still waiting on those juicy, red, delicious, 
apples of the earth. So hold off, let them sit on the vine for a little bit longer. And the main thing with these guys is you need to know your variety. So know what kind of pepper you have and know what type of tomato you have. This is gonna help you understand whether or not it is time to pluck that off the vine. Tomatoes become red because of carotenoids and lipocene, which are basically two chemicals within the fruit that cause that red or that orange color, and it will not be released until the plant is ready. Now, if you want to get tomatoes a little bit earlier, then simply just cut off that tomato from the vine and let it ripen indoors. Ethylene gas will actually develop in the fruits while they're sitting on your counter and will self ripen inside. It'll happen a little bit faster than if you had them outdoors. Um, so if you want to dive into that tomato sa sandwich just a little bit early, then this is definitely a method that you can try. Now, tomatoes also do very well when you harvest them when it's ready rather than leaving things on the vine because again, it just makes sure that the life cycle continues and that you get blooms, the blooms are fertilized, and you can get some more tomatoes later on in the year. This is particularly important with the smaller tomatoes such as cherry tomatoes. Then we have the cucumbers and the zucchinis of the world. And these guys actually do not self ripen when they are taken off the vine. So you do need to leave them on the plant until they are ready to be harvested. And it comes down to knowing your variety when picking your cucumbers or your zucchinis out of the garden. You need to know exactly what size range the end or the adult fruit should look like because they don't have really a lot of signs and signals to let you know that they are ready to be harvested. General rule of thumb is eight to 10 days after flowering, you probably will end up with a cucumber or a zucchini. The earlier you harvest, um, once it is matured and of proper size, the more flavorful it will be. Cucumbers, if you leave them on the vine too long, they'll begin to turn yellow, and that usually signals that it is no longer any good. But with a zucchini, they will continue to grow and grow and grow, and they generally get less and less flavor to them and they end up more with a woody texture. So just keep that in mind. It's kind of about what the end goal you are looking for is. So the last and probably one of the most popular ones that people are looking forward to this August for their barbecues is potatoes. And potatoes are ready to harvest about two weeks after they are done flowering. But I will warn you, if you harvest your potatoes two weeks after flowering, they will be very small but tasty little morsels, so they will be a little bit on the tinier side. However, if you are wanting to wait, you can do that as well, and you can simply just leave the plant alone and treat it as you normally would with fertilizer and watering. The latest possible time you can harvest potatoes is a surprising date. It is actually after the plant has completely toppled over or frost has gotten to it. You can even wait two to three weeks after that point, leaving them in the ground and they will be fine and they will actually continue to grow. That is crazy to me, but that is how they work. So you don't have to rush it. You can harvest as many as you want now and you can actually wait till the end of September in a lot of cases as well. So how do you finish off strong in the garden? And it kind of comes down to three main things. First thing being pests. You're going to want to make sure that you're watching for bugs that are eating either the vegetative portions of the plant or the fruit of the plant itself. And there's lots of methods to control this and PV Mart actually has both organic and inorganic products that you can try in your garden. Now, some of my favorites are actually diatomaceous earth, which is an organic form of pest control that you can use, but an inorganic form and one of my favorite brands that I actually purchased from PV Mart for both my indoor plants and my outdoor plants is actually the Savers Safer's brand, S-A-F-E-R-S. -E and they have something called insecticidal soap, but they also have a large range of other products that you can try. So I suggest you guys try those out. They work great in the garden. Um, they actually really work great for indoor plants as well. The uh, second important thing is to change your fertilizer. So I suggest you go out and you grab something that has a little bit less nitrogen. So that's that first number on the package and has a little bit more of those second two numbers, which is phosphorus and potassium. And the reason for that is because nitrogen is best for 
greeny, leafy green growth and not as valuable when it comes to fruit production and flowering. So to nurture those flowers, which then will turn into fruits and vegetables, be sure to get something that is high in a phosphorus or a potassium fertilizer. And there is lots of different versions out there, both again, organic and inorganic that you can grab from PV Mart. And thirdly, probably hands down the most important tip when it comes to ensuring the survival of your garden till the end of the summer and that you continue to produce luscious, delicious fruits and vegetables is water. And I seriously mean that. You're going to want to water twice a day if you need to. When something's in a container, especially, it's going to run out of water a lot faster than when it's in the garden because in the garden, the roots can dig down deeper into the soil profile to grab water from the depths of the earth. But in a container scenario, it's limited to simply what is in the container itself. So if you have to water twice a day, then do so. You want to prevent any sort of wilting or dieback of the plant, and you want to ensure that there's a continuous water supply. Water is one of the main ingredients when it comes to that delicious plump tomato but also incredibly valuable when it's peas or watermelons and pumpkins for example so water 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 do not worry about over watering this time of year it is probably nearly impossible um, just douse them twice a day if you need to once a day for sure very thoroughly and deeply through the entire profile of either the container or the soil itself. You will thank me for it later because that is probably what is causing that langy, leggy, overgrown look and uh, maybe some burnt leaf appearance as well. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments below where exactly you are gardening and what you're gardening and when you're expecting to harvest it or have you already grabbed some delicious morsels from your garden? I would love to know. Again, make sure you check out any sort of PV Mart store. It is amazing that they're sponsoring me and it's amazing that they're allowing me to do this video and allowing me to share on a platform as large as they have. Uh, how unbelievable is that? Just give the video a thumbs up for that reason alone. I hope this was a valuable video for you and that you learned a thing or two. If there's any questions that you do have, make sure you check out those resources I talked about before that PV Mart is supplying Canadians across Canada in regards to gardening and even preserving and canning chickens, backyard chickens. Who doesn't want backyard chickens? And I will talk to you guys next time. Crown Bye. going to be in the shot. You're going to be in the show. Now you're really going to be in the show. <laughs> I'm videotaping. Say, say hi to the camera. Yeah, you're standing right there. I'm not on it. Oh, I'm, I'm, right behind her. I'm the audience here. <laughs> <laughs> Just get going. Really, you want to see yourself with the gardening mop? You'd be on PV Mart's website. My best shirt and best shorts. <laughs> I don't want to get it. <laughs>